It's called apples and bananas. All right. Um, let's just go ahead and review this because the main thing I want to do is to talk to you guys about, you know, let's I just work on identifying the parts. And this is a review on cotan or on tangent. But obviously, we can relate this to what we're going to be doing today. So first of all, if I asked you to find the important parts, which we covered in your notes, the first thing we'd want to figure out is, now, is this in our form of b times x minus c? No. So I want to be careful here. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 halves tangent. If I factor out a 2, that's like dividing out a 2, I would get a 2 times x plus pi over 4. We talked about this last class, but is everybody OK with my factoring skills there? Again, check your work. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times pi over 4 is pi halves. When you factor out the 2, it's like dividing out a 2. Pi halves divided by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? OK. So now let's go ahead and discuss what is some of the topics or information we know. The period, remember guys, for tangent as well as for cotangent, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. So our b, so here's our a, here's our b, and here's our c. So b is pi divided by 2. Not really anything else we need to do there. We got it. Um, You take period divided by b. Oh, the wrong one. Okay. For sine and cosine, it's 2 pi divided by b. Um, the phase shift. Remember, phase shift is your c, but it's only your c when you factored out that b. It is not pi halves to the left. It is pi over 4 to the left. Um, and then. And then what about this 3 halves? Is that the amplitude? No, don't fall for the trap, guys. Amplitude is the half distance from the max to the min. Tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and cosecant do not have a max or a min. Oh, yeah. right? So there is no amplitude. Amplitude is only for sine and cosine. So this is everything we, can, we have here. It's basically everything we've talked about. Now, what could we understand about that 3 halves? What is actually that doing to the graph? A stretch, it's a fraction. Is it stretching or compression? It's a fraction that's larger than 1, so it's vertically stretching the graph. Okay? Um, and then obviously the 2 we know is shrinking because the period is 2. Now it's pi half, so obviously we know the period is getting compressed. So you could also think of the 2 as like a horizontal compression. Now let's go ahead and figure out the asymptotes because the range is negative infinity to infinity. So if you guys remember from your notes, the asymptote of tangent of x is x equals pi halves plus pi n. You don't believe me? That's fine. Go and look at the unit circle right here. When is tangent equal to 0? Or I'm sorry, when is tangent going to be undefined? When is y over x undefined? 1 over 0, right? At pi halves. And then to get to the next undefined value, which is 3 pi halves, how far do I have to travel? Pi. And if I travel pi again, I get to the next undefined value, right? So. Pi halves plus pi n is not something you need to memorize. You can just kind of refer back to that every time. Yes? And eventually, you'll do it so many times, you're like, I already have this memorized now. Thank you. I didn't need to get out my flashcards. Right? OK. Now, we have changed what is happening inside this function, though. Right? Think about it. So here's, here's the tangent function. This tangent function has now been compressed and then shifted. That just moved the asymptotes. right? Compressing it changes the asymptotes, and then shifting it left or right changes the asymptotes. Would you guys agree? Yep. So we need a way to represent both of those, um, or we don't need a way. Those, both of those changes are represented inside of the function. The 3 halves does not change anything to the asymptotes. right? If I have my graph and I have asymptotes, if I move this up or down, that's not changing the asymptotes. right? If I stretch it up or down, that's not changing where the asymptotes occur. Only horizontal changes. So if I want to know what my new asymptotes are based on these transformations inside of the function, just set whatever's inside the function equal to your asymptote or to the original asymptote. Now we just got to solve for x. So these are the changes that happen to x. If x had no changes, if there was an x there, 
your asymptotes would be pi halves plus pi, ha pi n. Right? But now, we multiplied by 2 and added pi halves. So divide by 2, and then we have x plus pi over 4 equals pi over 4 plus pi halves n. And then, to get rid of the pi over 4, I subtract the pi over 4. Now, should I subtract the pi over 4 to both of them like I divided? Because I divided to both of them. Should I subtract to both of them? Why not? Why can you do that for division, but you can't do that for subtraction? Should we just do it anyways? Well, guys. I know it's kind of confusing, the pi's and the 2's and the fractions, but can you subtract like x minus 5? No. They're not like terms, right? You can't do 3x minus 3 or 3x minus 5. It's not like terms. Pi halves n and pi over 4 are not like terms. You can't subtract them, right? And then plus, that's just derived, this is like the distributive property of division that we're doing, so that's what it gets. So anyways, you get x equals pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 0. Do I really need to write 0? Or can I just kind of forget about it? So your asymptotes occurs at pi half n. Now, some of you might say, Miss McLogan.